I've been practicing for over 12 years. I was born and raised in Missoula. This is where I want to practice. This is my community. And I want to be there to help the people I grew up with. I began my legal career in the United States Marine Corps. And I moved to Missoula, Montana and began practicing. And I just couldn't imagine a better place to live. What inspired me to become an attorney is I really have a passion for people, especially helping people. What we do here at Holloway and Hulling is we represent people that are in a very difficult time of their life. And we're here to make sure that their rights are protected and they get what they deserve. At this time, we'd like to welcome the Grambling State Tigers, uh, regular season and tournament champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. It is the second straight year they've won the regular season in the SWAC. This year, they were able to uh, win the automatic bid. It is the first appearance in the NCAA tournament for Grambling State, and we are really excited to have uh, Jordan Smith and Jermichael Moten uh, gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, before we open up uh, questions, uh, Jordan, we'll start with you. Just the excitement that has been uh, the week and in, in, in being here uh, in a historic moment for Grambling State. Um, it's a really exciting moment, you know. We like, we already been on the road for two weeks before this. So it's, it's, we kind of getting used to it. But, you know, at the same time, it's still first time in program history. So it's been a lot of... There's been a lot of emotions going on this road trip lately. And uh, Jermichael, your, your excitement? Uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a great experience for us. Uh, we're looking, uh, looking forward to uh, everything, and we're going to be in the moment. Questions for student athletes. Let's go to the first row, or excuse me, the second row on the end. Chronicle. Sorry about that. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Uh, just curious about um, what kind of emotions, you know, your team has had in the last couple of days, you know, making it to the NCAA tournament for the first time and uh, how you've processed all of those uh, coming into this week. Jermichael? Uh, it's been uh, very exciting. Uh, we are very happy to uh, get a chance to come out and show our talents on March Madness. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, wonderful. Jordan? Um, it's been really exciting, you know, with, uh, with the championship uh, being a couple of days ago. But at the same time, we know we still have business to do. So it was a lot of happiness, but it's still more work to do. Follow-up question? Uh, also curious about what the preparation for Montana State has looked like since Sunday. You know, what has stuck out about them on film that you guys know that your team is going to have to be mindful of? Jordan? Um, they have, uh, they're, they're real, they, they scored the ball a whole lot, so, you know, they have a whole lot of shooters, so we've been focusing on, um, closing out, closing out more, more farther than normal, you know, stunning, stunning to the guy. If that's not your man, stunning to the guy, you might have to just take him instead of just stunning, so it's just, they have shooters, so we have to get out of there quicker, quicker than normal. Second row on the end. Uh, Austin Parr with SWX Montana. Um, just curious, you guys played a handful of teams that are already in the tournament. How do you think that experience will help you, you know, as you guys experience your first uh, ever tournament experience? Jordan? Um, I feel like it helped a whole lot. You know, Coach, Coach said that coming into it, like he, he made our schedule specifically for us to come into this tournament. You know, he also said he, he put Dayton on our schedule ahead of the season because he knew once we get to the tournament, we'll be here. So he, it was just setting everything up so we can get used to it before it happens. Jermichael? Oh, yeah, just like you said, uh, you know, he prepared us for uh, moments just like this. So, you know, we got to come in and be um, very prepared. Yeah, second row again. For those of us who are unfamiliar, are you able to take us through uh, what kind of team identity you guys like to have or, or believe that you have? and um, maybe as a second part to that, what kind of identity does you know Coach Jackson have? What does he what does he like to play for? Jermichael? Uh, defense really. Uh, come out, be aggressive, play defense. Um, the defense gonna always always be with us. The offense not not gonna always be with us, but defense gonna turn into offense. Jordan, just like you said, just a whole lot of defense, a whole lot of energy. You know, Coach always says. Uh, the basketball starts on defense, you know. You can get turnovers, get stops, that creates your offense. So, like you said, basketball wins games. I mean, defense wins games. 
Jordan, you, you mentioned the experience in, in, in playing against Dayton. I know you you were out from that game, but it just the, the the atmosphere and you feel like that will be an advantage looking ahead towards tomorrow night? Yes, sir, definitely. Because, you know, coming into games like that, you already know what to expect, you know. I, I didn't play, but at the same time, I, I understood how it felt and it was it looked like almost a sold out crowd and we had a couple games like that, so, you know. If once once you play in some once you play in some games like that, fourth fifth game you're already used to it. Jermichael, you you did get to play in that game. Uh, talk about that experience and then how you feel you might be able to benefit from it and looking ahead towards the first four. Uh, it was a great experience. It, it prepared us for uh, we come out. We won't we won't be so rowdy and we just, we can be calm and just play basketball. Let's jump on Zoom. Uh, Coulter, your, your question for our student athletes. Hi, guys. Hey, Coulter Nuanas from ESPN Montana as well as Skyline Sports. Thanks for doing this. Um, just the fact that you guys get to play on national TV, everybody in this tournament gets to play on national TV, but you guys get to play this singular game where everybody's going to be watching. What do you think of that opportunity, both for yourselves, your team, but also for your university as well? Jermichael? Um, uh, it's gonna be great, you know. Uh, this is something we've been looking forward to, and it's uh, exciting to uh, be in. So I know it's gonna be a great experience. Jordan, um, I think it's a great experience, you know. But at the same time, coach has been coach has been preaching us the whole season that we were gonna get here. So it's just it was just preparation, and now we're here. So we just have to take it, take advantage of the situation. Second row. If I remember correctly, looking at your guys' schedule, it looks like you've won nine of your last 10 games coming into this week. Uh, I imagine that speaks to some amount of confidence or, or things going really well. What do you think has gone you know, to plan over this, this last stretch that maybe brings you guys a little bit of momentum coming in? Jordan? Um, I think, honestly, I think it's just everybody started to click at, at the right time. You know, I think everybody bought in at one time. And like, you, you could sort of feel the difference you know, on defense. Like everybody, everybody, it wasn't as many missed assignments or like missed plays, that accidental plays and things like that, you know, and the, and the energy just picked up on defense. So when, once, once we had those situations, we started making more shots and we started playing with even more energy. Jermichael? Uh, yeah, everybody's on one accord. Uh, and um, I think everybody just really want to win. And we, we gelled together real good. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any Town Pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. For those that are asking questions, we, we just ask that you please state your name and your media affiliation before every question um, in regards to us uh, typing things up and um, having that information up at the press area and also online. Uh, we'll jump back out online. Uh, Coulter, another question for our student athletes. Yeah, hey guys, Coulter Nuanas, ESPN MT and Skyline Sports. Um, you played such a tough non-conference schedule. I mean, I think look at the bracket. You played like four or five teams that are in this tournament. So how much do you think that prepared you uh, for both your conference run and now coming into this NCAA tournament? Jermichael? Uh, it prepared us uh, very well. I know, uh, I know they're going to be tough teams out there to play, but we ready for them. Jordan, the toughness of your non-conference schedule. Uh, I think it helps a lot, you know, coming into the tournament, coming into our, our conference tournament. It wasn't anybody that we were really, really shaken by. We we felt confident against everybody. And it wasn't really who we were playing. It was just the confidence that we had in ourselves based off of, based off of who we played and, that, and the progress we made. So I feel real confident coming in. Jordan, obviously uh, it's exciting to, to, to be here, but you look at last year's team and, and winning the regular season in the SWAC and then not being able to sort of – Take advantage, have the full squad there for for the SWAC tournament. How 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 good does it feel this year of being able to to win both the regular season and the tournament? Uh, it, it feels real good, you know, because 
Last year we got the championship and we lost by three, but at the same time it was we had guys banged up on the court. We had guys that didn't play. So winning this year it was it was it was really for those guys. So last year, you know, after after we won, I called a lot of those guys. They called me on the phone just saying how proud they were of me. So really, it's more than just this team that we're playing for. It's this team was last year as well. And then, Sure, Michael, just to add to that, sort of the the sort of the target on your back coming into the season with the expectations and then being able to come through? Uh, yeah, we know we had a target on our back from the beginning of the season, or well, since last year, you know. And we just know we had to come out of every game and knowing we got a target on our back and don't take nobody for granted. Uh, Chris, your question for our student athletes on Zoom. Yes, uh, it's kind of two questions. Uh, one for Tremichael. Um, Tremichael, being from Shreveport, uh, being from North Louisiana, being able to re represent Grambling in the NCAA tournament, what does this week and what does this game mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, but I, I know uh, the city, they behind us, no matter what we do. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great feeling. Chris, your other question? Yeah, uh, Dante, you know, you worked so hard for so many years um, to get to this point. Um, how emotional was it after winning the SWAC championship? Jordan, you mean? Uh, Dante Jackson, Coach Jackson. He's not up here yet. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'll ask, it, ask for anyone up there. Jordan, go for it. It was just about the, the, the feeling of the excitement. I, I think you've sort of covered that, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. it was a whole lot of excitement, you know. It was, it was a lot of emotions going on in that game, especially from the beginning, you know, because it, it was a real back and forth game. But once we started to pull away, we, we just knew, we just knew that was a great team on the other end, so we just kept going. And once, once the confetti came down, it was, it was a whole lot of emotions going on. We're understanding that was the first time in Grambling history, so. We just got to keep going. Let's go to the back row there. Dayton Gonzalez, uh, University of Dayton. Um, for both of you, obviously, you know, making history, being here uh, the first time in Grambling history to, to make the NCAA tournament. Have you taken a moment to kind of let that set in and, and what that means? Jordan? Um, I've, I've been trying to take a moment to let it set in, but it, it still hasn't kicked in yet. But I, but I feel like once we get on the court and step on the court, I feel like it'll kick in. Yeah. Michael. Yeah, um, I think, think I'm still still in the moment. You know, this is a real, real great feeling. Like, you know, it ain't never been done in the ground. So to be the first to do that, it really feels good. Let's go to the third row. Uh, hey, guys. Patrick Sabluski, University of Dayton. Um, what does it mean to you to be able to represent HBCUs on a big stage like this? Jermichael? Uh, it, means, uh, it means a lot, you know. Uh, just being being here really, it's been uh, – being here feels great, and uh, you know, uh, being the first to do this is really a great feeling, and uh, I'm, I'm just on in a moment. Jordan, it's a real good feeling, you know, especially with uh, with the situation that we're in, being the first school, being the first basketball team in our program to be here. So that just gives us even more of a reason to go harder and show everybody what, what we have uh, to prove. Second row on the end. Uh, Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. I, for both of you guys, why did you want to play for Coach Jackson? Jordan? Um, Coach Jackson, since the day I met him, he was just a real stand-up guy. He, I, I knew from the day I met him that it was all love, you know. He told me coming in when I uh, transferred here, like, you're a great player, but at the same time, you have to work for everything you have. And, and, at the, and also, he's always been there for me with everything I've been through. So, Michael on Coach. Um, uh, he came, come, came to my high school games, you know, um, built a relationship with me, uh, and made him like family, you know, came to the games and everything, and it's close to home. Chris, uh, another question on Zoom? Uh, yes. Hey, uh, Jordan, um, obviously, have you got, or anyone up there, have you guys had a chance to look at Montana State? And if so, what really stands out about the Grizzlies? Jordan, um, yeah, we we uh, watched a couple games on them, and we seem like I mean, it's a lot of shooters on their team. So you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, they go they go they play a, a lot of a high paced game. So we just have to uh, play defense, get them stop the ball, get them running at half court pace. And I feel like if we get them going at a half court pace, then that's more of our game because our game is stopping them and getting in the transits and our own offense. 
Jermichael, preparing for uh, Montana State. Um, yeah, I uh, watched a couple games. No, no, they like to uh, shoot shoot a lot. But it's going to come down to who really wants it and who's going to get the most stops. Jermichael, you were named uh, MVP of the uh, SWAC tournament. Um, talk a little bit about that experience, but more importantly, w what happened in that semifinal game when you really sort of caught fire and, and the feeling of having a game to where it seems like everything's going in? Uh, at that time, I know it was just uh, – I just felt like we needed a push. And uh, I feel like, you know, I had to do that to get my team, you know, happy and ready to just take over. Jordan, and, and sort of following up on that question to Jermichael, talk about your balance because it seems like uh, you know where he he's the guy scoring the basketball uh, against Bethune Cookman in the championship game. You you were scoring the basketball. It seems like you got a lot of different guys that can put the ball in the hoop. I mean, you know, with this team, like coming out coming into any game with with the type of guys we have, you honestly really never know who's going to be the leading scorer. So it was just it was just that moment where that that day the shots were falling for me. So you know I just had to be more aggressive and like you said the shots falling for T Mike. That's the shoot. So I'm gonna give him the ball. It was just it was just that game. From from last year's championship team in the regular season to then this year's uh, championship team in the regular season of the tournament, what 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 what's sort of the difference from from a year ago? Um. I feel like well last year like it was we had more we had older guys so everybody kind of knew everybody was everybody kind of knew coming into the game what the game plan was what what was going on like it was more of a it was more of a mature thing but this year like it was more young guys so it was kind of it was kind of a teacher moment at the beginning but once we brought in like I, I felt like it was it was nearly the same thing you know everybody was just going hard for each other once everybody once everybody connected in on on one belief. It was, it was the same team, and we got the same result. Other questions for our student athletes? Gentlemen, a historic year. Congratulations. We're really excited to watch you tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you. What is a jewelry design center? JDC is a family-owned business with deep roots in Montana. Why Montana? Because this community made us. Made us family, made us artisans, made us believe in love, made us hometown heroes, because this community made us shine. Why Montana? Because Montana is home. The stage, the head coach at Grambling State and Dante Jackson, coach of the year in the SWAC and 2003 graduate of Central State, just down the road. Coach, welcome home. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, before we get questions from our audience, uh, this historic moment for your program and, and your excitement of being here at the first four. Man, an incredible moment. Uh, just incredible. Uh, still kind of lost for words. Uh, just it, it's, it's been going so fast. So uh, just, just happy to be here, uh, ready to compete, ready to do what we do and kind of go from there. Questions for the head coach at Grambling State. Let's go to the second row. Hi there, Coach. Parker Cotton from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Um, your players are up here, and they, they just said that uh, one of their main team identities is built on defense predicated on you know, winning on that side of the ball. Can you tell us what that looks like day to day and how that has been uh, maybe a, a key to your season? Uh, that's, uh, you know, that, that's something we live by. I always try to tell them that uh, – I can't tell them if uh, you're going to make shots day to day. But I can tell you how hard you can play, and I can tell you that we can defend at a high level and rebound at a high level. And that's kind of our identity. Every day we're going to come in, that first hour of practice, they know we're going to do all type of defensive drills. We're going to get after it, and you know we're going to compete against each other. So when we go onto the court, it's not a problem competing. Let's go to the last row. Hi, Coach. Uh, Katie Gonzalez, University of Dayton. Um, you know, your student athletes talked about the experience of already being here and playing in a game at UD Arena earlier this year. What was your mindset with that schedule, and, and how do you think that's going to prepare, prepare your team for tomorrow night? Uh, coming into the year, uh, 
after going 24 and 9, you, you try to find people to play. <laughs> Not quite easy. You know, you go 24 and 9, and, you know, I was talking to uh, coach over here at Dayton, uh, and we were just talking back and forth, and he said, you know what, let's go, let's go play. Because my goal was to be here, anyways. So it was just, I knew this was where the first four is held. I know Dayton's a tough opponent. We're going to see somebody probably like Dayton at some point in time. So we got to kind of prepare and, and get ourselves ready. So it was just really more of a schedule and understanding the goal at the end of the year. Second row in the middle. Coach, uh, Austin Parr with SWX Montana. First off, congrats on, on being coach of the year. Um, players spoke on it a little bit, but uh, what was the main difference between last year's team and this year's team, you know, losing by three in the championship last year versus getting it done this year? Uh, the main, the difference between this year team and last year team for the most part is youth. Uh, we're playing three or four sophomores majority of the time and early in the year, it was an adjustment period for them to get acclimated. Some came from junior college, some uh, transferred from division ones, didn't play a lot. So you kind of got to get those guys acclimated to the, the expectations that, that we have here at Grambling. And then on the other end of it, just more of a, just more about, we were a senior led team last year and so many different seniors was ready to step up. And the main difference in the championship game this year is that we had four juniors or five juniors that returned that were seniors, and they remembered that pain. And at the end of the day, you know, they didn't want to lose, you know, that, that, that another time around. Because it's not always that you get to the championship game. So when you get those moments, you got to take advantage of them. Back corner, far side. Hi, Coach. Uh, Keaton Globally, Bobcat Sports Properties. Uh, beyond the basketball, Grambling State, what makes it special and what should the nation know about it? Uh, Grambling State, what makes it special? I mean, the history of Grambling and the tradition of Grambling makes it special. When you think about the history and tradition, you first you start off with Coach Eddie Robinson. Coach Rob was, uh, I mean, one of the most incredible coaches to ever walk this face of the earth. So every time, you know, I'm on campus, I always feel like I'm walking around greatness from Coach Rob to Doug Williams to Coach Hobby, who is the basketball coach who's the most wins, who has the most wins in the state of Louisiana. I mean, it's, it, it's just a lot of tradition at Grambling. A lot of tradition and it's the, it is exactly what our university slogan is. It is where everybody is somebody. <laughs> Let's go to the second row. Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle again. Um, Coach, can you take us through what the last you know, 48 hours or so have been like in terms of preparation for Montana State? What does that film study look like and what stands out about this team that you're going to have to be mindful of? I mean, our, our, our preparation has been uh, advanced. We, we've been rolling since Sunday. So uh, a lot of things that stand out is that the fact that they're really hot right now. They're playing some of their best basketball that they played all year. They pretty much kind of they, they kind of figured out the sink. They figured it out right now. And the one thing we got to do a good job of is just, you know, they shoot the ball at a high level, and we got to do a good job of controlling Jones. Jones does a lot to really set everybody else up. So, you know, it's, it's a tough game. You know, a lot of respect for Montana State. I mean, three NCAA tournaments. I know Coach Sprinkle started it, but uh, Coach Loki, I hope I'm not saying his name wrong, uh, picked right up. <laughs> I mean, picked right up, and, and, and it's still rolling. So, I mean, just, a, just an incredible program. And, you know, it's like I told, I seen Coach, we were both walking. I'm walking into practice, they're walking out of practice. I said, man, you will put, they will put us against the hottest team in the country. Like, come on now, like, <laughs> like seriously. But at the end of the day, a lot of respect for him and what he's done. You know, like for me, Division Two, Division Two, figuring it out, trying to get the Division One for him. I want to say Division Two, maybe D3, Division Two, then get the Division One. So, hey, you know, a lot of respect for him because, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough grind. You know, it's not as easy. These jobs don't come by very easy. So. You got to win, and people got to respect what you're doing. Second row in the middle. Hey, Coach Marcus Hartman from the Dayton Daily News. Uh, I know you've said that Dayton was kind of like a second home for you, uh, so I wonder, you know, can you expand on that for everybody here? And then also, just how did Central State sort of start you on this path? Uh, yeah, Dayton is second home. Uh, met my wife here. Uh, had my kids here. <laughs> like, I uh, spent 15 years here uh, from two from 1999 to 2014. I spent 15 years here. Uh, you know, grew up as a man. You know, I was born and raised in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I grew up as a man here in Dayton. So Dayton is like definitely a second home. So, uh, you know, I expect a lot of people from Central to show up today. You know, just have some, you know, some pride just because, hey, this, this is what it's about. So we always support our own. 
we'll jump online via Zoom. Uh, Matt, your question for Coach. Matt Donaldson, Ruston Daily Leader. Coach, seems like March Madness every single year, there's always a team that kind of takes the nation by storm, you know, one of these lower seeds. I guess, um, do you talk about that with your group, just like you said, taking advantage of this opportunity and kind of, you know, putting, putting the nation on notice of what Grambling is? Do you talk about that? Uh, you know, I don't know if we're taking the nation by storm, but, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the main thing is just coming out here and showcasing a good brand of basketball that we play. You know, we're, we're going to be a, a strong defensive-minded team. We're going to get after it. And, you know, we just want to make sure we play our best basketball. This is the time that you want to play your best basketball and you want to make sure that you're doing whatever it takes to stay, stay in this tournament. Chris, a, a question for Coach via Zoom? Coach, uh, K, uh, Chris Demersion out of KSLA TV in Shreveport. Uh, hey, Coach, first of all, how many ticket requests have you, have you gotten from uh, Dayton since you got up there? And uh, B, uh, what, who does Montana State remind you of offensively and defensively out of the team you played this season? Uh, ticket requests? Sheesh. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I had to make the Facebook and the Instagram posts. I don't have very limited, very limited, limited, limited tickets. Just please come support. Uh, so definitely got a lot of ticket requests, you know. Family, friends, college teammates, uh, advisors, professors. Hey, it's, a, it's a big moment. So, you know, you don't really realize how big of a moment it is at the end of the day until it's – you look at it, you got like 300 text messages. <laughs> so, totally different. Uh, but when I, when I look at when – I, when, I, when I watch Montana, uh, they remind me of a team that we lost to, Pine Bluff. Uh, Pine Bluff came in made 15 threes against us, really, really, really shot the ball well against us. Pine Bluff had four people in double figures that could score at a, at a high level. And when I look at this team, it's kind of the same type thing. They got guys that shoot it at a high level, uh, two different big men that can finish at the rim, one big man that's kind of, you know, a, a mismatch problem. He's playing on the perimeter, then he's posting you up. He's dribbling it in from the perimeter. You got this other 16 kid that's catching alley-oops everywhere. So. At the end of the day, you know, we got to do a good job of just playing defense and, and you know, uh, you know, playing our best basketball. Cool. Legal tip of the day. If you have contact with law enforcement, everything you say can be used against you. Be very polite, respect the badge, and simply say, please let me call my attorney, Dwight Schulte. Coulter, another question for Coach on Zoom. Hey, Coach. Coulter Nuanas from ESPN Montana and Skyline Sports. You mentioned just the, the tradition at Grambling State from Eddie Robinson to Doug Williams to the awesome marching band. How do you hope this sort of puts the basketball team into that tradition? And what do you think of this opportunity to show Grambling State basketball to the, to the rest of the country? Phenomenal opportunity for us to show, the, show, show, our, show our brand of basketball. Uh, I always say, you know, when you walk at Grambling, you know you're at a football school. <laughs> There's no if, no hands, no buts. <laughs> like, it, you know, but at the, I also want people to understand we play good basketball uh, at Grambling also. It's, it's some good basketball that's going on. Uh, and I also want to know, hey, we're we trying to change it to being a basketball school also. This is uh, three conference championships in seven years. Unfortunately, you know, my first year we won the, the regular season title. We had APR issues when I inherited the program. We don't have them issues anymore. Uh, last year we were in a championship game. This year we actually won the championship game. So I want to I want to feel like we're 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 making our own basketball history now, and we're trying to set the tradition where basketball is going to be great for a long time. Coach, do you have a favorite March Madness moment? Um, I got a lot of them, man. I mean, a King Ward blocking the shot. Homer Drew make I mean uh, Jacoz, uh, uh Drew making a shot. I mean, there's so many moments, man. I'm a uh, you know I was just in awe just having an interview with Coach Beheim back there. Like, hey, it's Coach Beheim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and the bad part is, you know, you see him out recruiting all the time and you do you know all the good stuff, but you know it's a high and by thing. But to really sit down and have a, t a moment to really t to speak with Coach Beheim and. You know, I'm sitting here like, hey, man, I buy all your DVDs on championship productions. You know, I mean, you know, just a, you know, a guy that just want to keep learning about the game and, you know, pick somebody else's brain and figure out what else it is to know. But hey, it's a lot of good moments. Uh, I'm hoping we can create our own moment. Chris, another question for Coach. Yes, Coach. Uh, Chris Demerge out of KSLA and Shreveport. Uh, Coach, after last year's hurt, 
how much pain did you guys go through last year after losing the championship game by a few points? And what went into each and every practice, each and every game of the season? What was the mentality, uh, especially going to the SWAC championship game this year? Uh, it was a lot of pain. You know, to see a guy like Cam Christian who stayed, who probably could have went to several different schools, stayed and finished out the journey to be player of the year. Uh, Shondarius Coward uh, come in two-year transfer, just really become a great leader. You know, watch those guys cry. That was tough. Uh, nobody likes losing, especially when you're a competitor. Uh, but every day in practice, we, we came with it. It was a fight. So that's why we're here. Coulter, another question for Coach. Yeah, hey, Coach Coulter, Nuwana, Skyline Sports and ESPN MT. Uh, can you talk about your non-conference schedule and how you think you, that prepared this team for – for the, the nice run that you've gone on now here the, these last couple of weeks? Well, I feel like we have one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the country. <laughs> uh, what, let's say Colorado, they're in the tournament. Dayton, they're in the tournament. Uh, Washington State, they're in the tournament. Uh, Iowa State, they're in the tournament. Drake, they're in the tournament. <laughs> uh, Sam Houston State won their league. Uh, Troy, third in the Sun Belt. So, no days off, uh, even Delaware State. Finishing the uh, finals of the MEAC. <laughs> so it's like, hey, no days off for us. And I, I knew that was going to happen, but that was what, a, you know, that, that I wanted that schedule so we could be prepared for this. We wanted to be, make sure it was tough as possible. So when the moments came, you know, we, we were ready. Second row in the middle. Hi, Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. Uh, there's been some, a lot of talk out there about possibly making some changes to the tournament I don't, with auto bids, maybe expanding it. I just wonder, from your perspective, you know, why would you say, if you say, that it's important to kind of you know, have all these different schools that are able to mingle and be part of this stage? Uh, at times, I'm a purist. <laughs> You'd be like, let's just play the 64. But then you start seeing the 68 makes sense. 72 may make some sense. And, you know, that you want to see as many uh, teams as you know, possible get this opportunity because this is a major opportunity to play in uh, year 68 of, what, 360-something. I don't know. It keeps changing and fluctuating. But I just think that at the end of the day, man, as many opportunities as possible is, is great. And not too many where you water it down, but, you know, as many opportunities as possible. One of the things that I didn't like is the kind of the format change in the NIT because – you know, winning a regular season title should be should, should be held to the highest regard. I mean, you go play somebody and on their home court and you play them on your home court, then if you win in that round-robin situation, that should be held high. But when now that, you know, you, the automatic – I guess there's not an automatic bid to the NIT anymore, that's, that's, that's tough. So, hopefully, you know, we, we can kind of revisit that eventually. I think that should change because I think you should reward winning the regular season title. I think that's important. And a follow-up question to that, Coach, you mentioned how hard it is to win a regular season title. You guys have been able to do that now two years in a row in the SWAC. And being able to come into the tournament, there weren't many teams in this field that were able to accomplish both the regular season and tournament. Just talk about that accomplishment of, of your group and, and, and trying to achieve a goal and then being able to go out and accomplish it. Oh, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. Uh, as they say, it's rough in the sweat. <laughs> so every day it's, it's competitive. Uh, and to be able to, to win both is, man, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment for, for our group. And we wanted that number one seat, like, all year long. We wanted that number one seat because we felt like having a two seat, it was such a disadvantage. We ended up playing. We finished our game at close to – 11 o'clock at night, you still got to get food, get guys sleep, and you turn around and play at four. And it was like, no, we want the number one seat. We want to play the early game and have all day to rest. So we wanted that. It was kind of a mission we was on, and you was just happy we completed the mission. Chris, another question on Zoom for Coach. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good, sir. I'm good. Other questions in the audience? Let's go to the second row in the middle. Marcus Hartman, Dayton Daily News. I'm curious, just kind of, what are some of the differences between Division Two and Division One? Uh, no matter what level you're at, Division One, how would you describe that? Well, the Division Two tournament ain't this. 
No, it's been a, it's been a blessing, man. Uh, you know, I've been to the Division Two tournament. Uh, now I'm in the Division One tournament. Uh, you know, it's uh, travel is totally different between Division Two, Division One because it's more of a regional situation. Being Division One, especially in our situation, we go play money games and whatnot. So travel all over across the country to play. You know, whether it's California, New York, Middle America. Wherever you go, you go do what you got to do. But uh, Division Two is just more regional. I mean, basketball is basketball. There's good players all over, you know. And as you start to see with the transfer portals, you start to see some Division Two players pop in Division One, playing really well. And, you know, it's, it's players everywhere. So regardless of the fact basketball is basketball, you got to score more to somebody and stop somebody from scoring. So it is what it is. Other questions for Coach? Coach, congratulations on an amazing season. We're looking for it to continue tomorrow night as your group goes up against Montana State. Best of luck. All right, thank you for having me. You have a blessing. I've been practicing for over 12 years. I was born and raised in Missoula. This is where I want to practice, this is my community, and I want to be there to help the people I grew up with. I began my legal career in the United States Marine Corps. When I moved to Missoula, Montana and began practicing, and I just couldn't imagine a better place to live. What inspired me to become an attorney is I really have a passion for people, especially helping people. What we do here at Holloway and Hulling is we represent people that are in a very difficult time of their life, and we're here to make sure that their rights are protected and they get what they deserve. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any town pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com slash rewards to register and start saving. Town.